to the Getting Schooled series where we're going to learn about the things that Jesus wants to teach us as we're getting ready to go back to school. And as I guess we already are in school. So you've been in school for a few weeks now and you probably know, you know, the right way to go to your classes. If you have a locker, you know, the right combination. But do you know the right choices to make at your school? Maybe you know the right choice, but when you know the right choice, do you do it? Well, maybe you guys have heard of this word called temptation before. So temptation is when we are presented with a situation where we know it's, there's, it's kind of not the right decision, but maybe it's, you know, maybe make things easier, might make us feel good, or might make us a little happier in the moment, but we know it's kind of not right. It's like, you know, you, there's a test and you don't know the answers, but, you know, the, the smart kid next to you, the paper is kind of like leaning and kind of just like, just look over a little bit. You don't want to just, you just kind of look at the answers just to help with that. Or maybe you're supposed to do your chores and your mom asks you, did you do your chores today? And you don't want to, you know, get in trouble. So you're just like, mm, yes, yes. And you lie about it. So these are different temptations that might come our way. Well, in the Bible, Jesus was actually tempted himself. You can see this Bible story in Matthew chapter 4 and Luke chapter 4. But we know in these situations, Jesus passed the test and made the right decisions. So our big idea for today is that Jesus teaches us the right way. So we want to learn from Jesus' example of how he made right choices and what he did in the midst of temptation. Yeah.
is trying to wreck me Like castles of sand, castles of sand I feel like an enemy army Is marching again, but I'm making a stand You surround me I just gave back the test papers. I can tell from your grace that some of you didn't follow my advice to study a little bit every day. Okay, I know I didn't follow Miss Foster's advice, but maybe, just maybe I did okay. Or maybe not. If you fail this test, you will have to take it again tomorrow during recess. Goodbye recess. Hi kiddo, how was your day? Have you ever known the right thing to do and you chose not to do it, but then you realized why it was important to do it in the first place and why you should have done it? Uh, yeah? Well, me too. I knew I should have studied for my test, but I did other things instead. Like, I, my mom tried to help, but I just wanted to like, I wanted to play with my dog and I went to play at my friend's house and I even did my assigned reading, but I never studied for the test. I'm a third grade failure. Whoa, now back that bus up. You knew the right thing to do was to study, and sure, you made a bad choice, but I know you are not a failure. You're just trying to make me feel better. No, I'm not. Y yes, I am. That's a trick question. The point is that I'm right. 
You can choose to learn from your mistake and do better next time. That makes you a success. I hope you're right. Have you ever made a big mistake? Oh, sure, kiddo. I failed my first test when I was learning how to drive a bus. I took out a line of traffic cones and caused a squirrel to run home crying to his mama. That squirrel hates me to this day. I really don't want to fail a test ever again. Well, you might and you might not, but you get to choose which way to go when you come to a turn in the road. Next time, ask Jesus to help you turn your bus the right way. I don't think I should be driving the bus yet, but this girl will be ready for that makeup test tomorrow. Alrighty, so I have something super exciting to show you today. I have a very smart, special packet of ketchup in this bottle and it will obey my every command. Do you want to see? I'm going to tell this little packet to go up and down in the bottle. Do you think I can do it? Yeah, because it's a very smart, special packet of ketchup and it always obeys me. It's so obedient. All right, little ketchup, let's go show them how you can descend to the bottom of this wonderful bottle. That's so cool, right? All the way, all the way. Oh, did you see that? And then rise. Oh, oh, amazing, right? Do you want to see it again? Me too. Let's watch. Let's go catch a bottle. Well, it's not a bottle. It's a little packet. Packet, come down here. Wait, wait, don't be scared. Don't be scared. Come all the way down to the bottom. He's a little shy. Let's watch him. Oh, there he goes. Descend, my little ketchup friend. Descend. Come on, come on. Oh, all right. I guess he doesn't obey all the time. And did you really think that a ketchup packet would obey me? Um, no, not at all. It's a science trick, of course. There's a little air bubble that's trapped inside of the packet, and this is all filled with water, so I don't know if you noticed or not, but as I squeeze the bottle, yeah, it would go down. And then, when I released the bottle, it would go up. So squeezing the bottle put pressure on that air bubble that's trapped inside the packet, which made it descend. And then when I released the pressure, it was able to rise to the top again. I know, seems kind of funny, doesn't it? So let's talk a little bit about temptation. Do you feel like that packet of ketchup, you're being pulled one way and then to another? Like you want to make that decision. You want to do that selfish thing. You want to, you're tempted to please yourself, even if it's gonna cost you or others something. But then there's this pull to do the right thing, right? To do what God would want you to do. And so you're struggling and it's almost like being this little piece of um, ketchup packet that's stuck between good and bad choices. It's almost like it's squeezing your heart and it's kind of hard, isn't it? Well, Jesus didn't just tell us what we should do. He showed us what we should do. When he faced temptation, he prayed. He asked for the help of the Holy Spirit. He knew the word of God and he spoke it over his situation. And he trusted that God would lead him to make the right choice in every decision that he needed to make. And he brought honor and glory to God with that. And you know what's really cool? You and I can do the same thing when we're tempted. Let's read 1 Corinthians 10, chap uh, chapter 10, verse 13. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. When you're going through temptation, you're not alone. God is with you. So do the same things that Jesus did. Pray. Ask for strength from the Holy Spirit. Pray that God would help you to overcome. And trust Him, right? When you're making that decision and you're being pulled to be selfish and then to do the right thing, ask God to give you the strength to make the right choice. So I want to pray today that we would seek God when we're being tempted. And that not only would we seek Him, that we would listen to the Holy Spirit, we would obey His direction, and that you and I would overcome temptation. Let's pray. Father, I ask that you would be with us when we find ourselves being tempted to make selfish decisions, to do things, Lord, that might be harmful for ourselves or not kind for other people or harmful for others. Let us always go and choose the right way. Help us, Holy Spirit, to listen to your direction. Help us to stop, 
to pray, to speak God's word, and then to act and do what you would want us to do. Father, we know that you will give us a way out of every temptation and that you will help us to overcome because greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us with Getting Schooled. Can't wait for you to tune in next week to learn more about what Jesus has to say. Ladies and gentlemen, who's ready to play another exciting round of Bible Backpacks? The exciting game of Bible trivia that tests your knowledge of Bible times and Bible stories. To win this game demands extreme focus. It takes brain power. It requires you to dance around with your hands in the air like you just don't care. The rules are simple. I'll show you two items and the name of a Bible character. You have to decide which of the two items that Bible character would most likely have put in his or her backpack if backpacks existed in Bible times. If you think the correct answer is A, then just dance around like a crazy person. But if you think the answer is B, stand perfectly and totally still. Everyone got it? Great, let's begin. Our first Bible character is David. If you think David would have had a slingshot in his backpack, then dance like crazy. But if you think he would have had a cell phone, then stand perfectly still. Time's up! Who's out of breath from dancing? Well, it was totally worth it because you're correct. Because of David's faith in God, he was able to use a sling and stone to defeat the giant Goliath. Let's move on to round two. Our next Bible character is Ruth. If you think Ruth would have had barley in her backpack, then dance like crazy. But if you think she would have had pizza, then stand perfectly still. Time's up. Who's dancing? <laughs> You're correct. Nice job. Ruth was gathering barley when she first met her husband, Boaz. Here comes round three. Our next Bible character is Moses. If you think Moses would have had a surfboard in his backpack, then dance like crazy. But if you think he would have had stone tablets, then stand perfectly still. up. Who's dancing? You should be standing still. God gave Moses the Ten Commandments on stone tablets, so he might have wanted to hang on to those. Here comes round four. Our next Bible character is Samson. If you think Samson might have had a comb in his backpack, then dance like crazy. But if you think he might have had dumbbells, then stand perfectly still. Time's up! Who's dancing? You're correct! Samson had long hair, but was super strong, so he probably didn't need to work out. Here comes round five, our final round. Our last Bible character is Noah! If you think Noah might have had a bird cage in his backpack, then dance like crazy. But if you think he might have had a snorkel, then stand perfectly still. Time's up. Who's dancing? You're correct. Noah had to keep track of lots of animals. So that may have come in handy. That's all we have for today. Thanks for playing Bible Backpacks.